Hello and welcome to St. Matthew Lutheran Church of Milwaukee. This is the service for March 31st, 2024, Easter Sunday, the day of the resurrection of our Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. The Lord's right hand was majestic in power. The Lord's right hand shattered the enemy. In greatness of his majesty, he threw down those who opposed him. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom. We sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I so declare, I declare my, my guilt, guilt, and, and I, I am troubled by, by my sin. sin. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover up my guilt. 
I said, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. He sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins and for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ Jesus has set you free. Thanks be to God. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. With is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we who have been raised with him through baptism may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from the book of Job, chapter 19, beginning at verse 23. 
Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing Psalm 118. my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live. give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this. And it is Our second reading is from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at verse 19. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the firstfruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come 
when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We acclaim the gospel. Gospel reading is the text for our sermon, which is the last in the th series of God on Trial. Today the theme is Vindication. We read from Mark chapter 16, the first eight verses. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We sing, Alleluia, Jesus Lives. Jesus lives and thus my soul, life is yours 
Grace and peace are yours in abundance because of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Dear fellow rejoicers in the resurrection. The name Herman Williams probably doesn't ring a bell for you. He was a man who was convicted in Illinois of murder back in 1994, and he began serving a long prison sentence. But then later, DNA tests revealed that he was innocent of that murder. So in the year 2022, after nearly 30 years in prison, he was released as the innocent man that he was. Reporters, of course, asked him, how do you feel about this? And his answer was, vindicated. Vindicated was his answer. To be vindicated is to be cleared of guilt or to be proven right. So today we consider vindication for Jesus, for us, and for our faith. After what took place on Good Friday, and as it took place, it certainly looked like Jesus was in the wrong, that he was the guilty party. He'd been put on trial by the established authorities among the Jewish leaders and put on trial before the established government of the Romans. And he was declared guilty of blasphemy and therefore worthy of death. Pontius Pilate, the governor, laid down the sentence, death by crucifixion. This was not only one of the most painful ways for someone to die, it was certainly one of the most shameful and disgraceful forms of execution reserved for the worst of the worst. And as Jesus hung there between two criminals or rebels or thieves bleeding and dying, he looked so weak and powerless. The women who had followed him closely throughout his ministry and followed him to the cross, they watched as he breathed his last like every other person who'd ever been put to death on a cross. And when that was over, they watched as Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' lifeless body and buried it in Joseph's own tomb. Jesus didn't come down from the cross as he was challenged to. He couldn't because he loved you and me and a world of sinners too much. He wouldn't because his work was not complete. He didn't come down from the cross to prove he was the Son of God. He did something better. He rose from the dead. Let this be a reminder of something we really never stop needing reminders of that when we think Jesus should maybe be doing something else, what he's actually doing is the better and wiser and more loving thing. And on Easter, Jesus was proved right. He is the God-man, the promised Messiah that he claimed to be. Everything that he did Everything that he said was vindicated, including the moment when at last he, to those who challenged him, said, okay, I'll give you a sign. And he said the sign would be that of Jonah, 
who was in the great fish for three days and then came out alive. This will be the sign that I am who I say I am. Jesus was vindicated by his resurrection from the dead. We are also vindicated. As was said, Jesus looked guilty on the cross. That's where they put the, the guilty ones. That's where anyone around there would say, well, he must have done something really bad. He had not done anything at all bad, but God was treating him as though he had done everything really bad that everyone had ever done. Jesus did have guilt on the cross, but it was not his, it was ours. And it was the sin of everyone who ever lived. And as Isaiah reminds us, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. As the Apostle Paul reminds us, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. God punished all sins in Jesus. And by raising his son from the dead, the Father put the exclamation point on Jesus' own words from the cross that it is finished. Vindication. Your sins are paid for were declared not guilty in front of the most important judge of all. You know, we can never think of Peter denying he even knew Jesus three times as something to be happy about. It was a shameful moment for Peter, and it might remind us of some of our own sins. But in a small way, we can be thankful for Peter falling into that sin. And it's this way. As the angel, what seemed to the women at the tomb to be a young man, spoke to them and told them what to do, he said, go tell his disciples and Peter. Why Peter? Well, we remember the last thing Peter had done to Jesus. He had denied even knowing him. What a, what a horrible thing to do. But the angel spelled out his name, Peter, who did that especially bad thing. We can be thankful because there are times when we can be convinced we did an especially bad thing. And maybe it's something beyond the forgiving grace of our Savior. We need to hear the angel saying, tell his disciples and you, insert your name there, that he is risen. And that Jesus' resurrection means that every sin is forgiven. Later on, Jesus personally face to face forgave Peter and reinstated him as a disciple. You denied me, but I will never forsake you. And that means that Jesus loves and forgives you and me as well, even for the times when we have doubted him, even for our sinful choices under pressure, under fear or under despair. We've all worried, doubted, done all kinds of things against our Lord and failed to do all kinds of good things. But Jesus says to us, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. There is vindication for our faith, for believing in what our God has told us. The Old Testament reading reminded us that neither Job nor any other believer before or since has wasted their time putting their hope 
in the Lord. Paul spells it out in 1 Corinthians. If Jesus had not risen, we would have no reason for faith, no reason to believe that Jesus was anything more than a fraud or just another criminal dead from crucifixion. We'd have no reason to believe that his words of forgiveness carried any special weight. And we surely wouldn't be able to expect to have any better fate after death. As Paul said, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. And since he has been raised from the dead, since the lifeless body lowered into the grave came to life again, we do also have hope beyond this life. Jesus is the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. The first fruits were what the Israelites brought in from the harvest, the first part of the crop that came in, and there was always the promise of much more after that. And that's God's promise to us. Jesus, the first fruits, the first one, and countless believers after him to follow. Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. When he comes is judgment day, the final, the ultimate day of vindication. As we consider the great power of the resurrection, we, we might think of times when our electrical power goes out in our homes. Maybe we were reading the book and the light goes off, we think, well, I can't read. Maybe I should get at some of that baking in the kitchen. Then we get in there and realize, oh, that's right, the stove also is electric. And then if we're slow on the uptake like I can be, I might have the next thought, I'll, I'll go downstairs and get at some of that cleaning. Then we remember, no, there's, there's not light down there either. It takes us a while to catch on that the power that we assume is on is actually off. It's, it's dead. Those women who came to the tomb early Easter morning with spices for preparing Jesus' lifeless body were really the opposite of that, weren't they? They were proceeding, going about their routine as though Jesus were dead. But he was alive. That's a lesson for us. Let us not go about our lives ever as though Jesus were dead. As though we don't have any hope. Although, as though this world is so full of darkness and evil and discouragement that we cannot lift up our heads in joy about anything. No, we have reason to hope. Our Savior is alive. Easter is vindication for our faith, vindication in the face of anyone who mocks our faith. There's been a lot of talk lately about the decline of the Christian church, at least in this country. You might have heard of the nuns, not Roman Catholic nuns, but the N-O-N-E-S, the nuns, which are said to be the fastest growing religious group in the country, but what that means is that when asked what they believe or what they belong to, they say none, none, none of the above. I'm, I'm not connected with any church. And we're tempted at times to say, yeah, the, the church is dying. But is that possible? How can the church be dying when the church, God tells us, is the very body of the risen Savior. Yes, congregations may at some point and do at times 
close. They go out of business. Some Christians tragically do fall away. But for as long as Jesus lives, and he lives forever, so does his church. We've been proven right. We're vindicated for our faith. It's seven times in Scripture that the Bible speaks of those who put their hope in the Lord never being put to shame. Several of those references speak specifically of the rock of our salvation, and we're reminded of the psalm announcing that the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, the rock of our salvation. The Holy Spirit inspired both Paul and Peter to repeat those words about never being put to shame when we put our faith in the words of the Lord. We will always be vindicated. You know, vindicated isn't the only thing that that Herman Williams said after being freed from prison, serving time for a crime he didn't commit. He also said this. He said it taught him to never give up. He knew he was innocent, so he worked and worked until at last somehow that was proven. Our faith is proven already, proven by the resurrection of our Savior, but that counsel to never give up remains. Never stop putting our faith, our trust, our confidence in the words and promises of our Savior. Sin is forgiven. It's, it's wiped out and washed away. Death is defeated. Jesus is Lord. Christ and his people have been put on trial, and Easter brings us the victorious verdict, vindication. Alleluia. Amen. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, on this glorious day, we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Increase our faith that the message of the empty tomb may fill our lives and make us glad each day. When we are weak, be our strength. When we are sad, be our song. And when we sin, be our salvation. Remove the hurt of death from all who mourn. In moments of grief, call believers through the voice of our Good Shepherd and embolden us to follow his promises. In their hopelessness of despair, turn the faithless to trust in the only way, truth, and life. Wipe away tears born of death and give new birth to a living hope in the hearts of the lost and troubled. Use our witness as compassion and comfort for others in need of mercy. King of kings and Lord of lords, destroy all dominion, authority, and power that stands against you, whether seen or unseen. Whatever evil exerts itself against your saving will, false teaching or lukewarm faith, Satan's lies or worldly pleasures, empty worship or futile religion, rule it for the sake of the gospel's free course. Triumph over our enemies and empower the church to fight the good fight to the end. Never leave us or forsake us. 
Walk among our churches, O living one, as the faithful witness and firstborn from the dead. As your angel sent women with the news of the risen Christ, call all in our church to announce, He is risen. As you sent your disciples with the breath of the Spirit, call those in our church full of the Spirit and wisdom to administer the keys of the kingdom. Wherever we live and whatever we do, help us to be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us to give the reason for the hope that we have in Christ. Heavenly Father, keep the baptized united with your Son in his resurrection. Put to death the fleshly urges of those caught in addictions. Clothe in your righteousness anyone ashamed of good intentions which have fallen short. And assure those searching for purpose that their eternal identity as your dear children is sealed. Thank you for the power of baptism working in our lives and for the certainty of its promises through the resurrection. Enrich us with everything we need for life and godliness. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. O Lord of life, you have done mighty things for us. We pray through him who is the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ, our Lord. His name is above every name, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our Lord Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be be thy name. name. Thy Thank kingdom you. come, thy Amen. will be done on Amen. earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you by his spirit, that Christ, dwelling in your hearts by faith, may fill you with all spiritual blessings. Go in peace. Amen. We sing of the day of resurrection. Listening to his eyes. 
all of God's word will endure forever, but this day we especially celebrate that the words, Christ is risen, will endure forever. We hope that you can join us in person sometime at St. Matthew Lutheran Church. We are at 8444 West Melvina Street in Milwaukee. Each Sunday we have services at 9 a.m. each Monday night at 6.30. God be with you until we meet again.